Kole ngambulo luku With whatever we do Jio ni safu nola With whatever we do Demu nyu skula Nye pamne ne kudlukula Nye pangi raga la gena Nye pamne ne kudlukula Ibulo ke nungoto ni be Ibulo ke dato ni be toto Bigi Bigi kongo Lamin Na Lamin ke gule nourin te nyame lamin Kamo na ulo kono Kamo lamin Pabi lenki Muna ngata akwa mole Ngata ya ngata Ngotole Fabrama Mingi Baba nyole Ngotole Fabrama Namu juwa la kankuma nite Fabrama Ndele ibari muso Ndomanara 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 Jamani mbele 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 Jamani ラーメンとかしてるんですかねベンキ。やらそうそうそう。サインでのアルバムもらうこももう。なん。いつでいつやるのラーメンハッキロディアタバック。あのサインてんミニストリコディングオレシスをこれ。あんまり。あんまり。
Hello viewers and listeners. My name is here to give a lesson on social to start in the upper basic. Now in the last class I gave you an assignment. The lesson was traditional music, songs, proverbs, dance, etc. Now the assignment was I gave you a diagram which has the picture of musical instruments which are labeled A, B, C, and D. Now use that diagram to answer question one, two, three. Here are the questions. Which of the musical instrument above is common to all ethnic groups? Look at the diagram carefully or properly. Now in this question, the answer will be C, which is drum. Almost all ethnic groups use drums as their musical instrument, which is labeled letter C. Question number two. Name the musical instrument. Name the musical instrument labeled A and B. A and B. The musical instruments level A is called halam. It is called halam, which is used by the Wolof ethnic group. Now, the musical instrument level B is called Bolong Batu. This Bolong Batu is used by the Mandinkas. It can also be used by other ethnic groups as well. Last question. The third question is name one ethnic group that used the musical instrument label D. If you look at the picture, the musical instrument label D is used by the, that is, Fulas. The Fulas use musical instrument level D. Now, our lesson today will be the Gambia's early contact with the wider world. In other words, this is the coming of Europeans to Africa. The coming of Europeans to Africa. Now, after the trade between West Africa and North Africa was established, what was the name of this trade? This trade was the Trans-Saharan Trade. The Trans-Saharan Trade. This trade make West Africa or made West Africa very famous and as a result West Africa becomes very much popular for its gold and slave. As a result of the fame of West Africa in terms of its gold and slave many Europeans started to visit Africa. That is the contact between Europe and Africa started in the in around 15th century. 
the Europeans began exploring Africa by around 1456. That is to go around in order to discover what is in Africa. The Portuguese were the first to come. The Portuguese were the first to come or were the first to explore by navigating the coast of Africa. The Portuguese exploration was invented by the then Prince of Portugal called Prince Henry. He was also known as Henry the Navigator, where he set up a school called the School of Navigation, where he trained some men and sent them to explore Africa. In around 50, in 1455, in around 1455, Venetian Alviso de Caramosto, sailed from Portugal to the coast of Africa and brought three caravels or vessels into the navigable River Gambia. Because River Gambia was navigable, Alviso and his men were able to explore by using River Gambia as a route during the course of their exploration. Now during this period, West Africa, like I said before, was famous for its gold and slave. Gold and slave these were the major things, although there were other goods as well. But gold and slaves were the major goods that makes West Africa famous or that made people interested of West Africa. Because they were the most valuable exports. Therefore, the coming of Europeans to Africa was based or linked to human and material. The human there is the slaves, that is the exportation of slaves to the new world, and also the material resource will be gold. Now, what were the reasons for Europeans' exploration in Africa? What were some of the reasons for their exploration in Africa? Or reasons for Europeans coming to Africa? Basically, there were five major reasons for Europeans coming to one of these reasons was to, to explore. To explore was one of the reasons for the coming of Europeans to Africa. This was or to go through Africa in order to discover, that is to know the unknown land of Africa. Because Africa was unknown to them. They did not know the continent. They heard about Africa. So this is why they come to explore in order to gather more information or to know about Africa. And this exploration was very important to the Europeans or it becomes very useful to them. The information gathered during the exploration were used by the missionaries, which was also one of the reasons and even during colonization, those informations were very much important then because they didn't know this place. So how can they be successful in conquering the place? By colonizing, they must get 
the information about Africa. So exploration gives them those information. And the other one is, number two, is to trade. That is to trade with Africans in terms of goods. That was the first start. Trade first started in the exchange of goods. Like I said, the most valuable goods were gold and slaves. Likewise, there were other from Europe as well, which they were exchanging with Africans. Among those goods we have, they brought, they came along with goods like beads, were brought by Europeans. They also brought iron bars. They brought perfumes. They also came with gone, gone, and gone powder. These were some of the or among that they were with Africans with their gold and and also you have the likes of hides. You also have wax, gum. This of some of the goods that were coming from Africa. Now, along the line, the trade got expanded. Trade, and this was when the slave trade came in. Slave trade was later in. That was a need for high labor force on the plantations in the Americas, this is why the Europeans started exporting slaves from Africa, Atlantic Ocean, to Europe. Now, the third reason, the third reason of coming was to spread Christianity. That is to introduce the to the people. Which religion? The religion of Christianity. Like I said, these people came as missionaries. We are preaching in the style of Africa. And they built schools, churches, where they were teaching people about the Christianity. And along the line, Western education was also encouraged because the Bible was their scripture, or which is their scripture, in, in those languages. So people to be able to read and understand, they must be introduced to Western education first. So this is why they encourage Western education. And the fourth one was to colonize. This was when they started to have colonies in Africa. That is to extend their political control of Africa. And in West Africa, for instance, the, the British were here to colonize. They had colonies in Africa, in West Africa in particular. The French also were here, who were rivals to the British. And you also have the Portuguese as well. For example, this was the period when the British were able to colonize the Gambia, Sierra Leone, Nigeria, and Ghana as well. And the French were able to colonize Senegal. Like Portuguese also were able to their South. Good. Fifth one was scramble four and
partition of Africa. That is the partition of Africa among the interested European powers. This led to the famous Berlin West African Conference of 1884 to 85, when the European powers in order to divide Africa among them, avoid conflict because they were all interested in Africa. So as they were rushing, there must be or there might be conflict as a result. Africa was petitioned, and during this petition, they were represented by their people, the people who represent their various countries. Now, this for their coming, we can categorize them into three main categories. These five reasons can be categorized under three categories. That is social, social and economic. As a result, the European coming to Africa was based on social, political and economic reasons. The social reasons were that is to expand their social life. Example, their way of worship, that is introduction of Christianity. And the political reason was to extend their political control, that is to colonize. Likewise, the economic reason was the trade. Now let's look at some of the early explorers to Africa. The explorers, the year of exploration, and the place that they adventure, that means the place that they visited. We are starting with the Portuguese explorers and traders. One of them was Alvisto de Cadamosto, who came in 1455 and 1456, and the place of adventure was the Gambia. We have the likes of Diego Gomez. Diego Go Gomez came in 1458 and 1460. And the place of adventure was the Gambia. We also have Diego Cam, who came in 1484. And the place of adventure, again, the Gambia. We have Ferdinand Mangelan, who came in 1519. And 1522 and Ferdinand Mangelan went around the wall this was when people were thinking that the earth was flat Mangelan went on his famous voyage to prove that the earth was not flat but instead it was spherical and we have the likes of Christopher Colombo who came in 1492 1493 and 1495 and his place of adventure was Northern America. Now the English explorers as well, the English explorers and traders, the explorer, the year of adventure and the place of adventure. We have William Hawkins as an English explorer who came in 1530 and 1532. And the place of adventure was the Gambia. George Thompson also came, that is in 1618, and he adventured the Gambia and East Africa as well. Richard Jefferson also came in 1620 and 1623. He adventure, his adve place of adventure was in the Gambia and Ethiopia. Captain Steeps, 1723, and the Gambia, his place of adventure. We have Major Hopton, who was also 1790, and the place was the Gambia. 
and the most famous among the British explorers to the Gambia was Mungo Park. Mungo Park came in 1795 and 1805. And his place of adventure was the Gambia, Senegal, etc. Now his obelisk is found in the Gambia in Sami. Karantaba Tenda. Same Karantaba Tenda in Sierra, that is Central River region. This is why the most famous English explorer in the Gambia. Now, what are the effects of European trade in Africa? One of the effects of European trade in Africa was one, the direction of the trade was changed from Sahara to the coast. I repeat, one of the effects of the trade was, the direction of the trade was changed from Sahara to the coast. Because before they are coming, West Africa was trading with the Arabs of North Africa. So in that, during that time, they were using the Sahara Desert. But like I said earlier on, during this European trade with Africans, they were using the coast to transport their goods to Europe. That means the goods that they were able to get in Africa. So as a result, the direction changes from Sahara to the coast. Two, the standard of living of people improved how was it improved because of the goods brought by the Europeans the goods that the Europeans brought to Africa uplifted the living standard for example the iron bars this was used by our Lord example the smiths the blacksmiths to make tools out of this which they also sell to people so it means their living standard was uplifted three iron bar iron and brass imported promote local industries like i said the these iron and brass led to the growth of local industries like the smithing in the smith industries where they were making tools among these tools were simple farm tools like hoe, cutlass, and the likes of an axe. Number four, the new varieties of crops were also introduced. For example, groundnut, maize. mango, guava, and the likes. These, those were some of the goods that the Europeans came along with, and they were introduced in Africa. Number five, it led to the growth of coastal towns. The towns along the coast were growing as a result of European activity. And number six, the European settlers intermarried with the African, especially the Portuguese, and their children were the half caste, and they are known in Portuguese as mulatos. That does the end of the lesson. And here is your assignment. Your assignment is one, the early explorers to the west coast of Africa came from where? Two, question number two, A. Who was the first explorer to visit the Gambia? Who was the first explorer to visit the Gambia? And B, in which year did he first arrive in the Gambia? That's your assignment. And I thank you all. Thank you.
Kas 